Hello boys and girls, it is time to do another interactive read aloud. And this week's interactive read aloud seems a little scary, but that's just to me. Um, we are going to read about pythons, which is very, very interesting. It is also what we've been working on, in case you can't guess, a hybrid text, which means it's two different genres brought together. And this one is fiction and nonfiction, meaning we will have both um, true facts and a story that isn't necessarily true. Let's look at our first page. What do we notice? I see a little mouse and I see branches and dead leaves all over the floor. And I also see a giant python slithering through. Python by Christopher Chang, illustrated by Mark Jackson. It's morning in the bush. Python stirs and peeks out from her sheltered resting place. She warms her head and smells the air with her forked tongue. Now it is time to warm her whole body. She slithers into the open bask. A sunny rock is the perfect place. So what I noticed already on the first page is that there are different types of fonts, just like we've noticed in our other books. Our larger font up here that I just read and our smaller font down here. Our larger font is the fiction part of this hybrid text and the smaller font is the nonfiction part of our text. So I will read the facts for you. This fact says, pythons, like all reptiles, are ectothermic. That means that they acquire heat from their environment, meaning that they don't produce their own heat. They have to get it from the sun, or like they said, a sunny rock, so they can warm up by laying on the rock. Her scales are dull. Her eye scales are cloudy. Her body has no more room to grow inside her old scaly covering. It's time to molt. She rubs her head against a rock and the old sack of scales peels back just like a sock. Underneath is a shiny snake. Now her smooth scales glisten in the sun. You can see the skin come off. See how dull it is back here and how vibrant the color is up here? Let's read what the fact says. Python's sleek scales are made of keratin, just like human fingernails. Snakes don't have eyelids, so they can't blink. Their eyes are covered by a single scale. I didn't know that. That's a new fact to me. With her body now warm, she glides to the dappled light in the trees, slowly rippling. She moves along the branches. A bird drops onto the branch. Uh-oh. He pecks at the bark, unaware that he's being watched very, very closely. Python smells the air, lies in ambush, and awaits. There's the bird. No idea that the snake is there. Let's read the fact. Pythons flick their tongues in and out to pick up scents. The snake is not being rude. She's smelling. The bird takes another step closer, focused only on the crawling insects. Python waits no longer. She misses. Just in time, the bird flaps away, safe from razor-sharp teeth. Look how close he got. So pretty sharp teeth. And I see another fact along the branch. Pythons have rows of needle-like teeth, perfect for grabbing, hooking, and holding prey, but no good for chewing food. 
You can see how sharp they are. Those don't look like our teeth, do they? The sky grows darker. Python slithers to the bushes and finds a covered spot. Passing creatures will not see her here. She checks the air. The animals of the night are on the move. A possum scurries past from her nest in the tree. A bat flaps by close to the ground, chasing low flying moths. A rat scampers among the grasses. Once more, Python smells the air, lies in ambush, and waits. You can see her all tangled up in the tree. You can see all the bats and the possums. I see some more facts down here. Let's read them. Many pythons have pits just underneath their lips. These are sensors that help them detect warm-blooded animals. Pits are great for hunting in the dark or in shady forests. Oops. The rat stops. He scratches the ground and moves a little closer, looking for seeds to eat. Python waits no longer. <gasps> Dinner. Uh-oh. Poor rat didn't make it. You can see the, the snake hiding in the bush. The rat has no idea. Let's read the fact. Pythons are considered constrictors. A python doesn't crush its prey. Instead, it suffocates it. Broken bones would make it harder to eat. With a vise-like grip, she holds her prey tightly and then quickly. Carefully, she coils her body around her evening feast. When the rat can no longer breathe, dinner is ready. Python loses her coils and starts to eat. The head first, then the body, and finally the tail disappears. The fact over here says, like all snakes, pythons can unhinge their jaws and expand their bodies to eat food that is much bigger than they are. That's kind of cool. Heavy python moves very slowly to a shelter to rest and digest her big meal. It will take days. Meanwhile, she waits. Look how big her belly is. There's the whole mouse in there. She's hiding in the rocks now. Let's see what the fact says. For some pythons, one large meal will be enough to last for weeks and weeks without eating again. <gasps> That's kind of scary. One day, Python stays in her nest. She is not alone. Hmm, I wonder who it is. She is coiled around her eggs. Her body shivers, not from cold, but to keep her eggs warm. She leaves her clutch of eggs to warm her body in the sun, though not for long. She doesn't want her eggs to cool or to be eaten by a hungry predator. Quickly, it's back to her nest, and that's where she stays for many days and nights until... Dot, dot, dot. Look at all of her eggs. The fact on the top of the page says, some pythons can lay clutches of more than 100 eggs. The shells are not hard like bird eggs. They are soft and leathery. An egg is about to hatch. A small slit appears out, pops a head. Soon, many heads are poking out from their shells. The hatchlings smell the air, watch and wait. Python leaves her clutch to bask in the sun, but this time she doesn't return. Look at all these little baby snakes coming out. That's my biggest nightmare. The fact says pythons, like many snakes, 
are born with an egg tooth to slit the shell. This tooth is soon discarded. I didn't know that. Did any of you know that? That there's an um, a tooth that is grown on them to cut through because it's not like it's not like a bird shell where they can just crack it with their beak to get out. They have to cut it open because it's it's soft and leathery, not like um, a hard shell. Finally, after many days, the hatchlings leave their shells. Now they are ready to start their own lives of smelling, resting, watching, and waiting. And this is our last page. It's just a little um, information about pythons that I would like to share with you. About pythons, pythons live in Africa, Asia, and Australia in steamy tropical rainforests, grasslands, swamps, or stony deserts, excuse me. And some are wonderful swimmers too. Oh boy, I didn't know that. Pythons are also found in Florida's Everglade National Park. Hmm. Pythons aren't native to America though, and these pythons have either escaped or are released pets or their offspring. The python in this book is a diamond python, which is found in Australia. Diamond pythons are more active during the day than other types of pythons, which are mostly nocturnal. That means they sleep or bask during the day and are active at night. Like most snakes, pythons have a bad reputation, but it is not really deserved. These are non-venomous, but good squeezers. Most female pythons are wonderful mothers, staying coiled around their eggs to incubate and protect them while they develop. Many have stunning colors and help them blend with their environment. And they aren't slimy, they can be. They are covered in dry scales. You can see the diamonds on it. I wonder if that's why it's called a diamond python. <laughs> you can see all the babies. Well, this is a very interesting book. I've never had much interest in any type of snake mm -hmm. because they do, I do find them a little scary, but I know a lot of people do have them as pets and enjoy spending time with them. But I hope you guys enjoyed this book. I did. I definitely learned a lot more about snakes that I didn't know. And now maybe I'm not as scared, but still want to keep my distance. Um, I'm trying to look for more books to read to you guys because I really enjoy this. I hope you do too. If you have any uh, recommendations of different um, picture books that we could look at, I'd be happy to hear them. Um, and I hope you guys are doing your work, staying on track. I know it's hard with all this free time. Some people want to play outside, but we do have to remember that we are students and we are working. Mrs. Maloney and I are working very hard to get as many materials and, um, different resources to you guys as possible to make this, make this not as hard as it is. Um, but yeah, just stay in touch. We miss you a lot. I wish I could see all your faces, but at least you can see mine and Mrs. Maloney's and hopefully we see you soon and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks guys.